everybody, and welcome to Bi-Weekly Roundup, the show where I talk about the movies I've seen recently and get my thoughts on them. Uh, this episode's probably gonna go up a little bit later than I initially wanted it to, because my schedule's been pretty backed up lately, but I did have time to go see some movies lately, so let's talk about them. It's time to hear the result. <laughs> movie I want to talk about is Veronica. Now this is a Netflix movie and it's from the director of the film Wreck. And if you don't know what Wreck is, maybe you've heard of the horrible American version where they show the ending to the movie in every single trailer. And oh look, it's even on the DVD cover. Great job guys. So this is a true story. Except it's not, because pretty much basically every detail is changed for the film version. But the basic strokes are similar. Hold on everybody. <laughs> Sometimes you just try to film a video, and then a cat comes to visit you. Say hi, cat. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to film the video now. He's just laying on me. Okay, now, time to go back into the nightmare world. It's about a girl who plays with a Ouija board during a solar eclipse, and a demon gets angry with her and starts messing with her. And that's it. That's the story. This might sound like something you've heard a million times before, so you probably checked out what I was talking about, and I don't blame you because I'm sick of this type of horror movie too. But what if I were to tell you that Veronica is actually good? Like, really good. Like, so good that I think if you know somebody who's never seen this type of horror movie for any reason, this should be the one you should show them. I, I, don't, know where you, I don't know where you found them. I guess they're living in a much better universe. Why this one? Well, all the performances are really good, the characters aren't horrifically stupid, there's lots of great scares, and the cinematography is gorgeous. I thought it might have been the It Follows guy who worked as the DP, that's a director of photography for people who don't speak film. This is cinematographer is another word. And then there you go, Andy's Film School. <laughs> I just saved you. Some money. Someone. But nope, it's actually the same guy who shot Wreck, and that's impressive because Wreck being a found footage movie doesn't really have a lot of opportunities for great shots, but you know, that adds to the realism and stuff. So to see him go from that to something this slick is really cool. This shows a great use of composition and movement. It's it's really, it's really good stuff to look at. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that the setting for most of the horror is fantastic. It's this apartment that is kind of like, it kind of has a split in the middle. So on the one side, you can see out a window and into the other side of the apartment. And the way they use this to set up some really good and creative scares is just, uh, woo, it's magnifique. Honestly, there's not that much in the movie that I can pinpoint that it does differently from other movies like this. Like even the demon design is just the most stock thing. Is this the new Cloverfield monster design? Like, do you remember when Cloverfield came out afterwards? Every single movie monster looked like the Cloverfield monsters. Just just how all, like, demons and possessions movies look now. It doesn't do too much out of the ordinary, but it's a classic case of style-enhancing substance. It's so captivating to look at, and everything is so finely tuned that it really helps amp up the tension and the scares. I love horror movies, but I don't typically get scared while watching them. Uh, that's just because I'm a real OG. Original Goldblum. Oh, uh, yes, um, uh, ooh, yes, um, uh, sure, I'll, uh, show up for, uh, one scene in, in your Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> hey, guess what I can't do? Impressions! And produce serotonin. So most horror movies don't actually rattle me, and it's certainly not possession movies, but this one really got me good. I'd, I'd recommend it wholeheartedly. It hooks you in with this great framing device right away and keeps you along for the ride. I honestly couldn't look away when watching it. It's a shame that this is Netflix material, because this would be great in a theater where you could have a bunch of people complaining about having to read subtitles. Oh, oh yeah, the, the film's uh, from Spain, so it's in, it's in, you know, uh, it's in, uh, Crap, what do they speak in Spain? Um, yeah, so it's in Spanish, but uh, if you can do subtitles, or obviously if you just speak Spanish, then uh, I'd say give it a watch, because honestly one of the better horror movies I've seen in recent memory. Yeah, I really dug this one, so it gets a recommendation from me. Moving on, next thing I want to talk about is Isle of Dogs. Now, I love Wes Anderson. I think even his lesser movies are still worth a watch, and his better movies are just pure perfection, you know, because I care about us, 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 <laughs> His last stop-motion movie, of course, was Moonrise Kingdom. You know, not many people know that's how they had to get Bruce Willis's performance. He's given up on moving, so they just had some technicians move him around between shots. Fantastic Mr. Fox was a great film, and it has one of my favorite bits in any movie. What are you singing, PZ? Just, just making it up as I, as I went along, really. That's just weak songwriting. You wrote a bad song, PZ. 
So of course I was totally down for another movie in the style, and uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty great. I feel like it's kind of hard to talk about Wes Anderson movies because you're either on board with his style or you're not, and that really influences how you're going to feel about really anything he does. I mean, if you're into it, this is exactly what you want. It's Wes Anderson at his most anderson E. And if you don't like his style, then you should avoid this like the plague, because you're gonna hate it. Personally, I think this shows a lot of improvement since his last venture in this area. Like, the, is his use of dramatic lighting and shot composition in this are just top-notch. From a technical standpoint, it's a big improvement over Fantastic Mr. Fox. I feel like I'm just comparing his movies to his other movies now. Do you see why this is hard? On the whole, there's a lot to love here. Everything feels very technically polished, and it's cool to see how much Wes Anderson improves visually with each movie. The story is engaging enough to keep you along for the ride, and the way they play with the language barrier is a great touch. The performances are all great, especially from Brian Cranston, and yeah, they're all doing the standard Wes Anderson deadpan delivery, but hey, it works, as usual. But like I said, it's definitely Wes Anderson as most Wes Anderson-y, so if you're not about that, then you probably shouldn't go see this, and if you are, then you're probably gonna see it anyway, because, you know, that's, that's just typically what happens. So it doesn't really matter what I say. I don't know where I was going with this. Go see Isle of Dogs. Yeah, I loved it, so I'm gonna say go see it. Next! Next movie I wanna talk about is Rampage. The best video game movie I've ever seen. Yeah, that's it. But what do you want? It's competition is that Prince of Persia movie where Jake Gyllenhaal plays Brendan Fraser playing George of the Jungle. Guess who wins? It's dumb, it's fun. If you think you'll like it based on the trailers or knowledge of the game, then you probably will. Moving on. So the last movie I wanna talk about is A Quiet Place. I actually saw this before I saw Rampage, but I wanted to talk about it last because uh, I kinda loved this movie a lot more than I thought I would. For those of you who don't know, this is the directorial debut of John Krasinski, who of course many of you may know as Carter Rutherford from the film Leatherheads. Anybody remember this? I don't blame you. I love when people who are more known for comedic work branch out into horror because I, I don't know, I guess I guess it's just really cool to see people branch out and show their range. So I was looking forward to this the way I was looking forward to Get Out. And much like Get Out, my expectations were utterly exceeded. I don't remember the last time I smiled the second the credits started rolling in a movie. I, I mean, out of out of joy. I, I remember the times I've done that just, you know, cause yay, yeah, hey, it was over. That was Death Wish. This had everything I wanted to see. Krasinski's use of tension in this is top tier work. It's really hard to imagine that this is the first thing he's directed because so many technical elements are absolutely exceptional. For example, the movie played with sound in a way I really wasn't expecting. Whenever they would shift point of view to Millicent Simmons' character, things like ambient noises and room tone would disappear completely or become completely muffled. This is because Simmons' character, much like Simmons in real life, is deaf. So that little technical detail helped really amplify the immersion and help you get into the character's headspace. That's the key word here, immersion. I think horror movies thrive on the sense that you're there with these characters and in the situation, you know what I mean? And structurally too, it's fantastic. From the amazing cold open onward, every piece of the puzzle fit perfectly. I kind of wanted to get up and cheer when it was over, but you know, I thought that wouldn't really be appropriate. Not because of the subject material of the movie, just because why clap? Why clap at a movie? It's, it's not a play, they can't hear you. you, you don't have to do that. Do you also clap in the plane lands? Why do people clap? Everybody should just stop clapping. Also, it was really nice to see a movie that didn't treat the audience like they were completely stupid. I feel like horror movies are incredibly guilty of this, but this one sidesteps that shit completely. There's so many little details that showcase how different life would be if you were trying to live this way that are never explained, and like, it, it left me going, hey, why is that like, oh yeah, I guess that would make sound. It's so great that I came to that conclusion myself as to why they did that, and I wasn't beat over the head with it. No one said, remember, Get rid of the Velcro, cause Velcro makes noise! You know, I just love that feeling. It just brings me some happiness. Maybe the feeling of happiness will finally return to my life. I, I, what's that? We're still barreling towards World War III? Oh, well, never mind. As for issues, I really only have one, and I don't really think it's that big of one, but once they started talking, I feel like the son's acting was a bit stiff. But it, it, was, it was possible that it was just that first scene, because every scene after that and before that, he was totally fine. And the ending, well, totally kick ass on the whole. It is a little too remindery, like you're seeing literal giant signs just giving you details from the film, and it's, it was sort of riding a line, and, and you know, eh. Also, I've heard some people talk about plot holes, but I had to have them explain to me, so take that for what it's worth, and to be honest, I don't really think they 
hold up, that's just me though. I had to look for things I didn't like about this movie. And yeah, there are a few, but uh, uh, yeah, overall I, I uh, kind of loved it. So go out and see it. Uh, you, you probably already did. I saw this later than I typically see new releases, but I'm glad I saw it and I'm really excited to see what John Krasinski does next. And that's all I've seen. Not sure how many more films are on my radar, but I'm sure that I'll end up watching plenty by the next episode. I know that I really want to see Hereditary. That looks terrific, but that's not out till June. Uh, I, I don't know. More movies next episode, uh, provided there is a next episode, provided we don't all die in the next coming weeks in a nuclear hellfire. I say it like it's a joke, but like, I don't, I, I don't know. Wait, that's a kind of a dark note to end the video on, huh? You guys want to see my impersonation of Jeffrey Dean Morgan in Rampage? Oh, you didn't know about 30 foot wolf. Wow, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm really liking how this series is going so far because, you know, it's cool to be able to talk about movies, you know, more seriously and just give my honest thoughts. So I'm really enjoying it so far. But let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like on it down below and maybe leave a comment with a movie you'd like me to check out, either here or on my other show, Bad Movie Touch. I'm always looking for cool suggestions. If you want to stay up to date with all the stuff I post, be sure to subscribe and then click the little bell and then fill out an info form with all of your personal data on it and then mail that to YouTube HQ. Oh, sorry. I was, uh, getting a little carried away thinking of what I'm gonna have to say in the future. If you really like my stuff and feel like helping me out and helping feed this creature, be sure to check me out over on Patreon. I'm incredibly grateful to all my wonderful patrons. He's such a good creature. And you can get cool exclusive content like your name on this end screen here. I'm incredibly grateful to all my wonderful patrons and wonderful viewers. You could also follow me on Twitter if you like, and uh, I guess I'll also link to the Twitter to my movie. I should probably start doing that. You could also check out the GoFundMe for my movie, and uh, that's shaping together really nicely. I'm excited for all you guys to see it. Okay, so that's all I really got, and I will see you guys soon. Look, look at the cat. Look at him. He's so soft. Except it's not. What the fuck were you reacting to? <laughs> what do they speak in Spain? Esperando. That's 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 not a language. <laughs>